Yo, what is going on guys? Loan at you with another tutorial. This one's going to be covering road paths and river paths. These are pretty easy to set up. Um, it's kind of click and go, but there are a lot of things that you need to know going into it because you can run into a couple hassles or little, little things that might hold you up that wouldn't normally. Um, so as you can see here, we have uh, a very, very simple, straight, uh, narrow road, and then a very not complex but a very noisy road here with uh with some curvature same thing with the river here as well um just pretty pretty straightforward so to get these started what you're going to do is in the top right of your rust edit menu once you're within a map um you have path tools right next to sockets and in between prefab list if you tap on that it'll give you a little drop down window right here it's going to give you several options we're going to be doing road and rivers in this tutorial I'll cover APCs and cargo paths in a later one, but we're gonna go ahead and start with road. And then we're gonna look in the general direction where we want our road to go. So let's just uh, start it right here. We're gonna go ahead and create new path. So with this road, um, every path that you create, it always starts at zero and then it works out into um, higher increments. So with this road, you can manipulate this however you want by clicking on the nodes. So let's go ahead and get a road down and then we can start modifying it. All right, so let's say this is my road. The first thing I like to do before I do uh, too much else to it is go ahead and press Control A to select all the nodes on the active um, path that we're on. And as you can see, as soon as we click on one of the nodes or all of them, it's going to pull up this transform tool window. At the very bottom, you're going to see linear. I really advise, um, especially if you have uh, all sorts of different terrain levels in your map, you select Bazier, if that's how you pronounce it correctly. Um, what this does is make it from these little corners that are really jagged. Like let's say this one, for example, this is not a very pretty corner. So since we have all the nodes selected, let's go ahead and switch it over to Bazier. See, that just makes it look so much better. It kind of curves out the road, averages out the, the angles. Um, really cool stuff. So I highly recommend changing it to NodePath Bazier. With that aside, you really don't need the Transform tool too much more now. The next thing is on the Path Tools option. We're going to review some of these uh, options over here. The first one is Add Node at Index, point zero. What this does is basically add a node to the zero node. So if you wanted to add a node to interest point, let's say nine, you just type in nine and click add node. Um, I, I'll be honest, this isn't very helpful for me. Um, what I normally do is just click on the node and then click control D to create another one. Um, so it's, it's there, it's an option. You can tap on it if you need. A split node, I don't use this one hardly at all. Basically what this does is splits the road into two. So let's say at node three, you wanted it to split the road into two different pieces. You can do that. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't really see too much of a benefit for it. I mean, maybe if you needed, if you had a really long road and you needed to average it out. Uh, let's go ahead and select this back to Bazier. I kind of changed up my road a little bit. Go back to there. So the first two, not the most helpful ones. Preview mesh, however, is very helpful. Um, if you have all sorts of crazy terrain with your map, um, let's go ahead and make it a little bit, a um, little bit crazy. Let's go ahead and get terrain tool, raise. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. So let's go ahead and raise this area right here. Path tools. By the way, if you're ever out of editing your road or you accidentally clicked away and it closed out, all you have to do is just tap on path tools select what you would like to edit and then just click on the road you are working on now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to control a to select all my nodes again and i'm going to go over by the transform tool and click snap to terrain what this does is make it to where it roughly connects each one of the nodes to the to the terrain um, it won't do the bazier nodes um, those you'll have to manually move if you want but you really don't know how to worry about those and i'll explain here in just a moment um so yeah the next option is the preview mesh what this does is makes it so you can see what the road's going to look like in the game so right now this is what it looks like in the editor 
if you click on this, this is what it's going to look like in game. So no matter what, your road is going to snap to the terrain. Um, this is a very helpful thing to know. It's it's going to pretty much attach to it no matter what. So even if you think you're making a bridge going over thin air, make sure you click on preview mesh because it might snap below your bridge and go into the water. So highly recommend using preview mesh. These next two options, I don't really ever use. Honestly, don't even know what they do, but they're there. I'm sure somebody knows what they do, um, but I've never needed them. So the next one is path width. This can change your road to a much wider road. So let's just go ahead and make it 11. So as you can see, it just makes it, uh, it actually makes it two lane. I think anything less than 11 is actually a one lane road. Yeah. So not like anybody follows the lanes anyway, but I like the stripe, so we'll stick it at 11. Outer padding makes it so whenever you apply the terrain modifiers, this is how wide that's going to be. I normally do one meter out from the road because that's uh, kind of like the default settings. You can widen that if you need to. I'll show you what that means. Let's just go ahead and tap five. And then we're going to apply terrain modifier. Now you can see it has a really wide shoulder on the sides of the road. So that's all that does is the padding. So I'm going to set it back to one and then apply terrain modifier. As you can see, it's much more smooth. It's not near as sharp edged and wide as it was with the five meter one. With the outer fade, this is basically like the, the splat modifier. So whenever you apply splat modifier, this is how far it's going to be from the center part of the road. So if you set that to 12, apply splat, it's going to be 12 meters wide. So right now it's, uh, it's eight meters wide in um, a diameter, I guess. So. That's how wide the roads are. Um, you always want this typically a, at least one meter wider than your path width, because if your path width is 12, then you're pretty much covering up all your side road. Actually, that doesn't look too bad, but you get the gist of that. So um, I used the terrain modifier a moment ago, but what this does is pulls up the terrain to your road, so it snaps the terrain to where your road needs to be. And we're still previewing mesh, so this is what it looks like in-game. Um, this is what it looks like and just in the editor, so just ignore that. We're just going to go ahead and select what it looks like in the game, because that's what's important. The next one is apply splat modifier. I also applied that one a moment ago as well. That just makes it so that the gravel is below the road, so it spawns all that gravel underneath the road. Um, that way your players have a nice, it's an easy texture to, to use, because if you don't have that and it's just grass, it seems out of place. The next two are the Topology layers. Um, topology layers can get kind of tricky to, to new map makers, but basically what this means is it makes it so players can't build on your road because it's painting on a layer that's programming the map to know, hey, the players cannot build here. This is a road. Um, additionally to that, it also is a place where mini copters know to spawn. So it's, um, right now, actually, I'll go ahead and pull up the terrain painter, topology, and let's go to road so as you can see nothing is on this it's just an empty road you can build on this helicopters won't spawn no loot's going to spawn this is just cosmetic the roads over there already have everything applied so as you can see they already have the topology so let's go back to path tools road click on road we're going to apply topology modifier and apply side topology modifier at eight meters what this one does is makes it so not only the road has the to road topology so that helicopters can spawn and players can't build on the road, the side topology makes it to where those junk piles are going to spawn. So the junk piles obviously are the ones that you would run down the road and loot. Uh, scientists will spawn by them randomly. Sometimes I think every like one out of five or something like that. But you can change the width of that as well. Um, that's by default eight meters, um, I believe, outside the road range on each side. But you can set it to wider or more narrow. The more narrow you make it than this eight number, the less often you're going to get uh, junk pile spawns. So the wider, the more junk pile, the uh, less amount, you're going to get less. The next one is the spawn decor objects. As you can see, uh, you have four options, bus stops, decor objects, power lines, and substations. Bus stops you can do, these are all optional. You don't have to do any one of these, uh, but they are they make it seem more like a road. They just kind of like tied it all together. So let's go ahead and do bus stops. It adds a bus stop at the beginning and the end of the road. 
it automatically applies the splat as well as the terrain. So it's perfectly attached to the very end of the street. Um, so you get nice little, little bust ups there. Decor objects. This is going to be the yard, the yard signs, the road signs that spawn on the road. And since this road is so short and it's in an open field, it finds that there's no reason to spawn any. So it says spawned zero objects on the selected path. It will say that from time to time. The longer your road, the more it will spawn. Same thing with power lines and substations. Let's go ahead and try power lines since we're already here. Yeah, it didn't spawn any there. Substations, it probably won't because there's... Oh, it actually did. But since there's already bus stops here, it doesn't like that very much. So. You can do those as you want. Um, if you do bus stops, I wouldn't recommend using substations. If you use substations, I wouldn't recommend using bus stops. Um, that's a tip that I've just kind of figured out over time. Once you're done with the road, you can just go ahead and click on Finish, Editing, and Close. And now your road is complete. Now, since it didn't spawn any power lines or decor objects on the road, you can go ahead and manually add those back to the road as well. That's what I had to do to those really short roads over there. What you can do is on the prefab list, you can search power line and it will be power line pull A or B. Um, you can just click and drag and you can rotate these as you would like. You don't have to add too many. Do you like every 40 meters or so? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just power lines on the street make it look more complete. So that already looks more like a natural road. And then if you would like, you can go ahead and search road sign. And there's a number of different road signs you can use. It randomizes with that road path tool. So it'll spawn stop signs in the middle of the street and stuff like that. Um, not in the middle of the street, but on the side of the street. But you can just drag these around as you, as you please. It just makes it seem more complete. There we go. So now we have power lines, a road, bus stops, and signs. So that is how you fully create a road path within Rust Edit. Next, we're going to go ahead and cover river paths. River paths are very, very similar to roads in the way that the user interface is. So we're going to go ahead and tap on Path Tools. And instead of road, we're going to click on River. Let's go ahead and get our little canvas over here. Going to go ahead and click Create New Path. So what this does is spawns three nodes. You pretty much can't see anything at the moment. You're going to go ahead and just tap on the nodes. Um, and drag them where you roughly want your river to be. Your terrain may vary a little bit. I'm just using a big empty map, so there's no hills or anything on this. So it's, um, it's kind of plain. Let's go ahead and say this is going to be our river. Very short one. We'll just go ahead and add one more node just for the heck of it. All right. So with this river, I always do the same thing as a road. I always select everything. Node type from linear to bazier. I'm probably butchering the name of that. It's probably uh, Bezier's. I don't know. Anyway, with the um, path tools, same thing. Add node and split node. Don't really use those too often. I don't have a use for them. Preview mesh, highly recommend keeping that enabled. That way you know what it's going to look like in-game instead of just the editor. Um, the default path width, I believe, is 24 with a padding of 0.5, which is half a meter on each side of the river, and then an outer fade of 16. Um, we're going to go ahead and see how those take effect whenever we apply terrain modifier and splat. So as you can see here, it just goes ahead and modifies the terrain to allow the river to sink within it. So it covers up all the edges of the water. With that said, if you change, I'm going to control Z to undo that. If you change your path width, to let's say 40 and then apply terrain modifier, your river is going to be much wider. Um, I don't have a, any means against this other than the fact that it does do this um, floating water clipping. Uh, I don't recommend going that wide. I normally recommend between 10 and 30 at most. Um, so let's just stick with 25. It's a pretty, pretty wide river still. So not too bad. It, it doesn't look great right now just because we haven't applied all the modifiers on it, like this right here. Let's go ahead and let's change it back to 24. Yeah, 24 is the, the good point. Terrain is already modified. We're going to go ahead and go down to splat. 
Splat just creates all that uh, gravelly rock area like you would see in a river, um, at least in Rust. And then apply topology modifier applies the river topology. And then side topology applies, you guessed it, side river or river side. You can change the width of that as well by tapping on the 8. You can change that to however wide you would like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just click Finish Editing and Close just to show you. And the Terrain Painter will go to Topology. We'll go to Find River. So that's our River Topology. And then we go to Riverside. So this is where uh, corn and uh, pumpkins and all that are going to spawn on the side, stuff like that. So that's that's the benefit of the topologies. Otherwise, it would just be a a river in the middle of the field. Nothing would spawn by it. So going back to Path Tool, clicking on the river, we're back in our river editing tool. You don't have to use these options again, the despawn decor options. I always like to use a river source. What that is is just a rock at the beginning of the river, just because it makes it look more closed in. Um, and semi more natural, I guess, as natural as we can get it. Um, the end of the road or the end of the river as well. Normally, I would bleed off into an ocean or a lake. Um, that's why it's a little clippy here. And I, I normally would run it into like a pond or something like that. And it looks a lot better. But for this river, this is just a sake of a demonstration. You have your river source now, which is the big node at the beginning of it. It serves no purpose other than just cosmetic. The next option is river sounds. This is the actual sound that you hear whenever you're around a river. Highly recommend using those. It adds that little bit extra immersion effect to it. So now you have the sounds, you have the river, you have the topologies, and you have the spawn, um, the spawn rock there as well. Whenever you're done, you can tap on finishing, finish editing and close. And then, like I said, if you ever need to go back and modify your river, just go to Path Tools, select River, click on the river, and then you can do everything you need. You can change the width, apply all the topologies layers and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, finish editing and close and then save your map. That is how you create roads and rivers within Rust Edit. If you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Drop a like on the video. Um, as well as join the Discord, I'll leave a link in the description as well as to the site. Uh, you guys can check out if you'd like. There's a lot of cool people in the Discord that are more than willing to help you out, get started map making. Um, this stuff's super fun. That's why I'm making these videos to show you how how easy some of this stuff is because there's a lot of different things that you have to learn. And just seeing the easy things learned within one video, I feel might uh, ease more people into it a little bit. So if you do have any questions, just drop them in the Discord. We'll help you out. You guys have a wonderful day, and I will catch you in the next one.